There's um, a kind of a sliding doors moment where I've been told that you were actually chosen to play the lead in a film which most definitely was a hit in 1984. But instead, the role eventually went to Kevin Bacon. The film was Footloose. I screwed that one up more than you could possibly imagine. I was partying my butt off in the 80s. I had the movie, they basically gave me the movie, and then one day they said, uh, hey, listen, the director and everybody wants you to come in and see you because, uh, uh, you know, before everything gets started. And I, and I said to my manager, I said, I can't go there. I said, I'm just, I'm, I'm heading to Palm Springs and blah, blah, blah. And I, I said, and, you know, I've been, I've been partying my butt off. I'm like, and they, they said, no, 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 you gotta go do it. Well, I went in there and met up with them, and when I walked out of there, I, I didn't have the part anymore. They just said, this guy's just too much, too much of a man. Were you? Yeah, of course, yeah. I was definitely, I, you know, I, I was caught up in that whole uh, world uh, until I got married and I had my son. When I had my son, I, I said, look, this is, I, I want to be like this. I want to be a dad. Somebody like me, or I, let's just keep it to me, doesn't see it not happening. You always know that, and, and I've been pretty lucky. I got to admit, I'm pretty lucky because I've, I've always worked. You know, they haven't been great big movie hits anymore or anything like that. And I think that was one of the things that uh, disrupted my marriage, believe it or not was the fact that I wasn't chasing the business. When, when I was 16 teaching sailing, I would take a dollar away from every paycheck for some day when I was gonna have kids. So at 16, for whatever reason, I just knew I wanted kids. So when I did have kids, and I told my two kids every day, I said, you're both mistakes, so be good, you know? So, I was a good dad. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I just really wanted kids, and so that's why I cleaned up my act. And my, you know, my son was one. I didn't, I didn't want to be that anymore, and I wanted to be a dad really bad. So I ended up staying home more. I didn't want to miss a baseball game. I didn't want to miss a dance recital. I didn't want to miss any of these things. And I wasn't chasing the business. I wasn't going out to the parties. I wasn't going out to the events. I wasn't, you know getting that publicity, which is so vital, just, I mean, you, you look at some of these stars today, and they're stars for no reason. They're just stars because they're in the paper, or, you know, they're on TV doing a commercial, or whatever it is, they're just in a magazine all the time. And so you have to stay in front of, I mean, one of the, the jokes I always say is, one of the reasons why I don't have a series right now is uh, I'm not an alcoholic and I don't have a sex tape. You know, if you had those two things, you're, you're into Hollywood, you know? So that's my advice. If you're asking, how do I get into the business? A sex tape and an alcoholic, you're in. Yeah, and you know something though, whatever reason, Australia always appealed to me in, 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 in a, the deepest level. I don't know, the people, I just adored the people. They were so kind and wonderful to me, but it was, the, what I really loved about it was it was like the last frontier. You know, of all the places on the planet, you come to Australia and they're freaking off their heads. I mean, they're crazy, crazy. And I love that. Ah, come on, mate, let's go, you know. Phil Avalon's making me jump off, jump off rock, you know, to go surfing. I'm a New Yorker, I, you know, yeah, but you look new like you can surf. I'm like, they're nine foot waves. I, what, are you kidding me? Come on, mate. You know, people come up to me all the time. Ah. Oh, I've got this great movie, and I want you to be in it, and I can do it for you know forty thousand dollars, you know, because I got this and I got that, you know, and all this sort of stuff, and they get very excited about it, and and they said, you want to be in my movie, and I go, no, and they, well, what do you, it's a, what do you mean, you don't want to be in my movie, and they get all upset, and I said, well, the problem is, is that I understand that you want to make these movies for, you know, this price, but. The point is, and it's very, very exciting, and, and I'm happy for you, but I have to make my living too. And 35 years in the business, the unions say, I can do this movie for free, or I can do it for a, a, 100 bucks a day. So after, what, you know, 10, 15% to the manager, and taxes, and all the rest of the stuff, and then I put gas in my car to get to your set, I'm paying to be in your movie. You know, I don't, I, I can't pay my groceries, I can't pay my bills, and, and unfortunately, when the reality hits of that 
that's the truth. One is this kids movie that I want to shoot in the, uh, the Haunted Gold Mines in North oh. Carolina. It's a great kids action adventure film in the, in the vein of Goonies and Home Alone. And it's a fun, fun, fun film. So the kids movie is action adventure. You know, it's a treasure hunt, the whole thing. Uh, it's, it's great. The, the, the Lucky Valentine is set here in Australia. It's sort of a crocodile Dundee in reverse, which is really kind of fun. And it's about you know, a crazy baseball player that, that comes out here and gets sucked up into these whack jobs in some outback town who have entered into a, a cricket tournament and need an extra player. <laughs> and then the other project I have is a, is a project that's uh, called Feathering the Wind. You can go on YouTube, actually, and see a little teaser that they put together. And the producers from Fast and the Furious and Fried Green Tomatoes and the River Wild and the Bone Collector, they, they're running with the picture. And it was just very interesting because uh, it's, a, it's a movie with the backdrop of sailboat racing. And it's a coming of age movie. And it's sort of a blue lagoon with a modern day theme, but it's about a boy who steps into a man's shoes. And it's a very, very, very uh, visual movie. And so it's a very commercial movie in the sense of music. And, and you know, like Blue Lagoon, for instance, this is the way I like to describe it when I talk about it. And Blue Lagoon was such an iconic film for the day that when you hear that music, when you, it brings back a, a moment in time for most people when they saw that movie. And I believe that this movie, this Feathering the Wind, has that same uh, opportunity to it because it's a very beautiful movie about family, friends, love and growing up. And it's about that first kiss, that summer first kiss. And I'm the writer of all three of them. Uh, you know, Marianne's project she brought to me, but I, like I said, redid it. Um, so yeah, I, I, on those pictures. But the two that are here, which was very interesting to me that I came here, because Lucky's set here. Um, Feathering the Wind's set in New York. It's set on the East Coast, because that's where, the, you know, the, in the United States is the real sailing uh, home where America's Cup, New York Yacht Club, and all that sort of stuff, Rhode Island and everything is all set there. But funding and financing wise, they might have put all this together. And I'm kind of staying out of that one at this point in time, but I am producing it. Um, but those people have done it so many times. They've raised over a billion dollars in this industry to make, to make movies. I don't like getting there. I'm tired of. You know, Scott Baio, who was in, in Chachi and Happy Days, and Charles in Charge, and all, is a really good friend of mine. He's sick and tired of auditions, too, and things like that. Brooke Shields, I talked to, she doesn't want to audition anymore. You know, there comes a point in time you just do this so much. I just want to make my own films, you know, and, and I don't have to even be in them. I don't want to make some films. But I do love acting, and I do love doing that. That's, that's my passion. But I get really excited about chasing and building. It, the one thing that I haven't done and uh, I shouldn't say I haven't done, but The Man with the Child in His Eyes, uh, or The Storyteller, it was originally called Man with the Child in His Eyes, but The Storyteller uh, was, I wanted to build something from the ground up. For me, as a, as a creative person, which I'm now just embracing, you know, uh, that this is who I am. Um, I, you know, I could be a carpenter, I could be anything, but unfortunately, this is where I was put on this earth, is I'm here, this is what I do. And so I'm embracing that, and the one thing as a creative person, and that's why I said in the beginning that I think it's important to learn a lot of things, is I just have never yet built anything from the ground up in this business. And that's what I want to do. I just want to, uh, give me the ball. Give me the ball. Let me, let me do it once. Um, and so I think that's, uh, that's where I'm at, and that's where it, it, it is very exciting. And it, and it is a wonderful, wonderful business. If you really, when you get past the business, Yes. Yes, I'm single. Uh, <laughs> movie business is, is, is art, and everybody looks at art differently. I mean, uh, some people love Titanic, some people hated it, you know, and I'm like, how could you hate that movie? But that's, you know, that's just how people, you know, perceive things. But that's this business. Mentors, there's a lot of things that I've learned. Some of the greatest mentors were the people who screwed me. You know, like my business manager took all my money and left me with one kid and one on the way and $200 in the bank, you know. Uh, me and Tom Hanks and Donna Mills and all kinds of people and I had to restart my life. It was a huge, huge, awful, awful time in my life. 
and people say to me, well, you know, and alcoholism and all the rest of the stuff, those are some of my greatest mentors because they taught me how to be me and who I am today and that it's, it's okay to be a good person, you know, and, and to enjoy being a dad. Um, and, and, and that to me was, was the, my greatest acting role was being a dad. <laughs> Um, but I never realized how wonderful it would be or how special it would be. It's one thing to have kids, but I just never realized how magical and special it really was going to be to watch your kid be a parent and all the values and all of the, the things that you taught them all of a sudden are right in front of you. You, you, know, you didn't think about it at the time and now all of a sudden you're watching them raise their kids and what worked and what didn't. Hey, the question was, in case you didn't hear, would I uh, ever think of making a movie in Greece? Um, they make a lot of movies in Greece, and would I like to make a movie in Greece? What's very interesting is when I got married, um, our dream was to have our honeymoon in, in Greece, but in, instead we had a baby, um, and then we never got there. So no, I have never been to Greece, and I've always wanted to go, I've always wanted to go to Greece. So yes, I would love to make a picture in Greece. That's one of those movies that I'll do for 100 bucks a day, you know, because I want, I want to go to Greece. Um, yeah, and, and, and the way I look at, at, at where I'm at right now is I'm really focused on getting this film off the ground. And when this film gets off the ground, then I have more clout, you know, because people still uh, look at you like if I was going to direct the, the kids' movie, they said, what have you done before? And I said, well, I've directed this movie that I wrote before. Yeah, but what, what have you done before? I've been in the business for 36 years. What have you done before, you know? And, and, and it's crazy, but I understand it uh, on some levels, and then I don't, because you've got to start someplace. But they're making it sound like I'm starting. What have you done? And, and, and it's crazy, but I get it. You know, directing is a whole different ball game, and if I'm going to throw my money at you, what what... Why? What, what, what about you? You know, and I, number one reason is, well, I, I've been in the business for a long time. I understand it compared to where you're going to take your money and that guy over there is going to convince you that you need to throw your money in him. He's never done it before, but for some reason he talks better than me, you know. So anyway, I don't know what I was getting to, but the point was is yes, once I get going, I would love to come to Greece. I would love to produce a movie in Greece, and uh, I, I can't wait. It would be a, a, a dream to shoot a, a movie in Greece.